Hey there, this is Scott Welsh. It's January 7th, 2016, and this is the weekly blog post. Now, normally I put these videos slash blog posts out on Wednesday, but yesterday I did a post on 10 recommendations for the new year. So that was Wednesday, but I promised a video for today, which is Thursday, January 7th, and so that's why we're here. It's important that I get two posts out this week because this probably, the topic today is probably the most important thing I've ever talked about publicly in regard to trading. Uh, it's a big deal. I've got some data here that is helpful to me, actually blew my mind, and it may be quite interesting to you too. So let's talk about the torture of success. To do that though, we gotta talk about what in the heck success is first, right? If you listen to Tim Ferriss's podcast, and I mentioned Tim Ferriss in my 10 recommendations in the post from yesterday, but if you listen to Tim Ferriss's podcast, at the end, he always asks his guests, who would you consider a success, or what do you consider to be successful? And it's honestly not an easy question. Uh, a very poignant answer one of, his podcast get, uh, one of his podcast guests said was, is Robin Williams successful? Now, I would say Robin Williams is incredibly successful. I think he was amazing but yet he ended up kind of sad at the end, right? With kind of a tragic ending. So is that success or not? I mean, it's a very, very tricky subject and it can be you know, sad, borderline tragic if you take the conversation too far. But let's talk about what is success because if you can't define it, you can't achieve it. You can't go up to the counter at an airport and say, give me a ticket and they say, where? And you say, well, I don't know, right? You don't go anywhere. You can't say, I want to be successful if you don't know what it is. So let's be very specific though. Let's, let's take this broad topic and move it way down into something that we can talk about and understand and put some data to. And that is in trading slash investing, some people separate those two terms. I don't. We're, we're trying to do something to make money. I don't know if it's an investment that lasts a while or trading that lasts a minute. To me, it's all the same, right? But whatever. In trading, success equals money making money over time, right? Success means you're trading, you're investing, makes money, and then it makes money next year and next year and next year. Yes, you can have a big trade like the big short and make billions, right? That is one way, but that's not really repeatable. I'm talking about, some, I'm talking about something that's repeatable, something that we can do over and over again. We can quit our jobs and rely solely on trading to be consistent. To me, that's my definition of success. It makes you a ton of money, but it's consistent. And that is crucial for my definition of success. So, assuming you agree with me, let's move on. Under those parameters, who is a quote-unquote success? Well, answer is pretty easy, right? Maybe it already popped in your mind. Warren Buffett, right? Warren Buffett is the most successful trader slash investor of all time, right? I mean, there's really no disputing that. He's the first person I studied years and years ago when I wanted to get into trading. He's the first person I read all the books about. Warren Buffett is still saying important things and still is a multi-billionaire, one of the richest men in the world. There's no doubt that Warren Buffett is, is a success, right? Let's take a look at this chart. This is a chart right here of Warren Buffett and um, let me sc scroll it over. Nope, you can't anyway. Trust me, it's Berkshire Hathaway and I think it's cut off in my upper left hand or yeah, upper left hand part of my screen. I guess you'll have to trust me. Um, but oh, I know how to do it. I want you to trust me. It's so important. Watch this. Ha ha! See that? Sorry, my screen was a little limited. So that's Ber Berkshire Hathaway, and it's a weekly chart. And this is as far back as the data goes on my weekly chart. So from 1997, Berkshire Hathaway stock price was this, and in 2016, stock price is this. If you took the stock price here and took the stock price here, right, and took a percentage increase and then annualized it over all those years, Berkshire Hathaway averaged 9.7% in the last 19 years. So obviously there's some losing going on, right? Look at 2008, 2009. Woo, that was a rough one. But it gradually goes left to right, which is what we think of Warren Buffett. And in that left to right movement to right here, that's an average annually, an annualized return of 9.7% over 19 years. That's pretty awesome, right? Warren Buffett is a success, all right? But let me throw out a name for you that we've talked about before, and that's Bill Dunn. 
just recently in Michael Cover, Covell's Trend Following Podcast, which is huge, by the way. He gets massive audiences. He gets massive downloads and listens. Um, I, I reserve my comment. Uh, I, I think the podcasts are pretty good. I check in with him from time to time. But in a previous podcast, he mentioned Bill Dunn. He mentioned Bill Dunn in the context of one of the best traders of all time, right? Not just something good, all time great, good, awesome, whatever you want to call it. Let's take a look at Bill Dunn. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you may feel, Covell may be right. Uh, Bill Dunn is arguably the most successful trader of all time. You don't believe me? Here are some facts. Currently, he's the 14th rated best hedge fund manager in the world. Uh, and there's a site that has public data that I go to. It's called Managed Futures. You can go there, look it up yourself. It's not secret information. But right now, based on his average annual rate of return, he's the 14th best CTA in the world. CTA, hedge fund, same thing, right? So that's pretty good, but that's not all. Dunn has returned 14.63% a year on average. You know, Remember, just like we did it for Warren Buffett. Since 1984! And I mentioned this in the past for my trend following, uh, in my trend following podcast slash, uh, not a podcast, slash blog post. Um, but he manages, also manages 525 million. So let me repeat that. 14.63% a year since 1984, and he manages 525 million, almost a half or over a half a billion dollars. Now, if you invested $10,000 with Bill Dunn in 1990, you have $348,141 now. 10,000 with Bill Dunn using that 14.63% a year would now be $348,000. Is that a success? Um, um, yes, would be my answer. Now let's compare though, okay? In the last 19 years, which is the amount of data I had on our Berkshire Hathaway chart we just showed, if you started with just $10,000, in the last 19 years, using the chart that I showed you, Buffett would have turned 10000 into $58,000, $66. Bill Dunn would have turned 10000 into $133,865. Near, I mean, just trounces, all right? Almost three times what Buffett would do. And if Buffett is a, if Buffett is a success, Bill Dunn is an unbelievable success. As it says on the slide, he's an outrageous success by any measure, all right? So if we're going to talk about what success is, we can just go right to Bill Dunn and just stop the conversation. I mean, Bill Dunn is success, right? I mean, is any no one disagrees with me, right? So it seems like, okay, it's easy. We've defined success. All we'd have to do is trust Bill Dunn or trust our personal system that produces the same amount of numbers, right? If you can make a system that can average 14.63% a year over time, repeated over and over again, you are a success. Conversation done, right? It's easy. Thus endeth the lesson. Make 14.6 and repeat it, right? But it's not over. And I need to, this is where I need to bring some facts to the table that may blow your mind because they definitely blew my mind. To get to that finish line, right? To get to that $300,000, right? That $348,000 you see right here. To get to that finish line over that time, here's what you'd have to go through. Check out these numbers and I'll try to go slow. And I call them the torture facts. To be a success, here's the pain you'd have to endure. In Bill Dunn's system, if you were trading like Bill Dunn or an investor in Bill Dunn, you would have two losing months in a row 41 times in the past 26 years. And that's just as far back as the data goes. I would have gone back farther than 26 if I could. So 41 times in the last 26 years, two losing months in a row. Now, December was a losing month for my portfolio, and I was furious about it. I am a pretty level-headed, calm, unemotional person. And I hated December. I was really angry about it. I didn't like the way it was trading. I thought the interest rate hike screwed around with my robots. It would get into the middle of a trade and then switch violently. It would lose long and then lose short and then lose long again, which does not happen in systematic systems, right? You have longs that 
miss all the time and you have shorts that miss or lose all the time, you don't have reversals where it loses long, loses short, loses long. It's like, that means everything you try loses. And that's what December was. And that's one losing month, right? And I was not happy about it. If you're going to be a massive success like Bill Dunn, you'd have to suffer two losing months in a row. Not one, like I just did, but two losing months 41 times. That's almost two times every year. For 26 years, you'd have to lose. You'd have to be down. That's unbelievable. That's an unbelievable amount of losing. But of course, there's much more. Bill Dunn has lost three times in a row, 14 times, right? So half, over half of the years. Every other year, you'd have to do 90 days of not only not making money, but losing money. You would, your accounts would go down for 90 days every other year. That is an unbelievable amount of losing. But that's not all. Bill Dunn has had four losing months in a row 11 times. So four years out of 10, almost every other year, you would lose four months in a row. You wake up in January, lose. February, lose. <laughs> March, lose. April, lose. Right? You know, you just tell your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your wife, your husband, I've just started a new system. I've just invested with the best investor in the world, Bill Dunn. Aren't you proud of me, honey? Sure, honey, nice job. And then four months later, you've lost money every month. Can you imagine those conversations? Can you imagine explaining that to your trading partner or your partner partner? Four months in a row. Can you imagine not calling Bill Dunn's office in that four month period, right? What a horrible time if you're an emotional person and not prepared for it. But there's more, of course there's more. Bill Dunn has had five losing months in a row four times. So 15% of the times, right? 15% of the years invested. If you invested it for 26 years with him, four times you'd have five losing months in a row. Unbelievable. One time a decade, you'd have five losing months in a row. Almost half a year of only losing money. But that's success, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. But there's more. <laughs> there's always more. It's like an infomercial. I then tracked the months in Bill Dunn's fund where he had a 10% loss or more. So how many months and since 1990 has he lost in a month, in 30 days, 10%, right? Now I built my portfolio to lose, never to lose 10%. That's what I personally trade. My goal is to never lose really more than seven or 8%. I mean, that's the max. That's, that's about the most I can handle. At least that's the most I want to handle. We're talking about 10% or more, right? Way more than I've determined that I could handle. 29 months, okay? 29 times Bill Dunn has lost you 10% or more if you're an investor. How about 15%? How many months has he lost 15 or more? Eight. How about 20%? All right, I'm not talking about a 20% loss in a year. I'm talking about a 20% loss in a month. Oh, but that's happened three times, right? Of, of course you've had to go through that. You looked at your statement, you had 100,000. At the end of the month, you have 80,000. You lost 20,000 bucks in a month, right? If you, if you have a million dollars, you just lost $200,000. How's that feel, right? Mm, interesting. But let's go even more. Let's take a few more facts. Let's look at the biggest losing stretch, right? So this is how, what was the low watermark, the biggest drawdown over time? Because it's not only the amount, it's how long it lasts, right? We've looked at the amount, how many times you've lost 10, 20%, and we've, lost, we've seen how long it lasts. So let's put those two together. Taking the length of the loss, and the severity of the loss, here are some fun facts. In 2011, and I got these out of order, so I apologize, but in 2011, he lost 22.64% in a stretch, all right? But what's interesting, even though in 2011, you would have lost 22.64% in a stretch, you would have ended the year up 6.37%. We'll table that. In 2015, he went down 16.8%, Right? And 2015 was a great year for Bill Dunn. But to get that 15%, 15.82, excuse me, at some point you, your account would have gone down 16.85%. Let's, let's talk about more. How about 2007? Remember that housing crisis? What they talked about in the big short? 
He went down 40% at one point in 2007. Your account would have dropped 40.3%. Did you panic? Well, if you didn't panic, if you stayed in, you would have ended up up 7.94% for the year. In 2005, he lost 29%, and that year he couldn't recover, ended up down. In 2004, back-to-back -back years, he lost 43%. How's that treat you? In 2004, you would have lost 43% and ended up down for the year. And then in 2005, you would have gone down 29% more and ended up down for the year. So it's back-to-back -back losing years, losing 29% of one and 43% at its worst in both times. Could you make it through that? How about 2000 even? 2000, the millennium. 44.18% in a stretch, and this is multiple months. It's not one month, it's multiple. So not only is it that deep, it's long. It's a long period to look at your account statement or to look at your trading account. 44.18%, and yet he ended up 13% up for the year. And then in 1994, he went down 36% and ended up down. And in 92, he, ended up, he lost 26% at one point and ended up down, right? So what do we take from all that? Well, the lesson basically of this entire blog post, video post, is on this page. You need to understand the incredible amount of pain it takes to be the best. We've already talked about at the beginning that Bill Dunn might be the best investor in the world, maybe the best investor ever because of the length of time he's done it. And yet to be the best, whether you're Bill Dunn himself and he trades his own money, at least he claims to, to be Bill Dunn, look what you'd have to go through, right? You would have to suffer a 44% drawdown to end up positive for the year. You have to be aware of that, right? I have to be aware of that. I need to get better at this in the new year because I will never suffer a 44% drawdown in my portfolios, um, but he could and yet still win. The bottom line is this. To be successful, you're going to have to go through a lot of pain. If you're not willing to do that, you can't play the game. You have to be ready for it. Furthermore, stick to your system. If you trust your system, whether it's uh, the few people or some of the people that have bought my robots or someone else's robots or your own trading system or a discretionary system, if you're not willing to go through the pain and you do, because you don't trust it, you can't reap the rewards at the end. Success is not easy. Success can even be torture. But if you know it ahead of time, my hopes today is that you'll be able to handle it and you'll end up a big winner in the end. That's all for this week. I'll be back next week with a new post. Happy New Year, everybody, and I'll talk to you.